Thank you very much. It is such a pleasure to be here and representing the wonderful people at Southern Utah University and to be part of this great system. It was it was nice to listen to two of my alma maters this morning, the USU and the University of Utah. We've got a wonderful system in this state, and you should feel proud about all the different schools. Last year when we gave our presentation, those of you that were here may remember that I used a metaphor, and metaphors are never perfect because they always leave something lacking, but it's hard to compare a person with a product, but to the extent that it works, we're doing our very best to produce bicycles. Being a little less concerned about how many raw materials or subcomponents come in the front door and being far more concerned with how many smooth, operating, high-tech, quality, tuned-up bicycles go out the front door. That's been a focus of ours, and that involves several things for us. One is is completion rates. It's, it's simply the increasing the, the rate of students who are succeeding with degrees, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. And secondly, making sure that the quality is good, that the bicycles that come out are top quality bikes that are tuned and ready to go in today's environment. And then lastly, um, I want to tell you just a couple of the really fun innovations that are going on at Southern Utah University. So first, graduation rate. If we go back um, a few years, you can see that the graduation rate has increased by 47% or 7% per year consistently over the last six years. These lines are not linear. There's a little bit of up and down in them, but this is our focus. We're not satisfied, despite the fact that we now have the second highest graduation rate in the system. Um, our goal is to get it up to at least 70% graduation rate. We think that that is going to require us to increase in the next six or seven years the same amount we've increased in the last six or seven years. Uh, the next um, phase, though, is more difficult than the last phase. And as we approach what I would uh, compare to being full employment, because a lot of students are coming and then they have some other goal that comes up. As we continue to increase our graduation rate, we're making a sincere effort to bring everyone with us. This chart that you see is comparing Southern Utah University to every public school in 14 western states. And as you can see in all of these subgroups, the percentile for SUU is way up. Look at the Hispanic group. We're the 82nd percentile for graduation rate among four-year schools. This includes flagship institutions, highly selective schools. It includes everybody. We just put them all in. And we're continuing to move this up. Currently, we're at the 73rd percentile as an institution as a whole. And it's fun to see that some of the minority or ethnic groups are actually doing better than average. So we have a lot of work to do here. Our goal is to be at least in the top quartile in every measure of success. Well, let me shift to just a couple examples. If we, if we had more time, we could spend all day. But I want to give you two examples that are reflective of the university as a whole. First is in the business world. And as you know, we have a proposal for a business. We don't expect that to be funded today, so I'm not making a pitch. Be funded this year. I'm not making a pitch for that. But our business students are doing phenomenally well. Um, we do this ETS major field exam for every single graduating business student. It's a voluntary test, but it's administered by 489 universities in the United States. In Utah, Weber, Westminster, Dixie, and SUU do this test. And we complete in the 84th percentile, in the top 16th percentile of all business students in the country. And you can see the results below that. Every single accounting graduate, economics, and marketing graduate have jobs uh, in their field within six months of graduation. Outstanding program. In the second example that I would give you is in healthcare. Uh, we've had an exceptionally good year this past year from our students who are in the health professions and the pre-professional programs. Now, typically, our nursing students, on the first time they take their board exams, pass that exam at about 97.5%. But over the last couple times, every single student has passed on the first go. And as you can see down below, every single student that applied to medical school was admitted this last year. Every student in optometry school, the vast majority that applied to dental school. We don't see those numbers every year. It's more like 90% rate getting into medical school, but the last little bit, it's been 100%. I don't believe there's an institution in America that can say that every single student 
that went into their pre-med program was able to get into medical school. So this talks about the rigor, the strength, the preparation. In order for this to work, what happens is that when a student shows up, they sign up for the Rural Health Scholars Program, and we begin tutoring them from the first semester in their freshman year to help them have their resume perfect by the time they graduate. This is a quality education plus to do everything we can to help them be successful. The next area that I'd like to mention is what we're trying to do to respond to industry. And this is one example. So the Sandy Area Chamber of Commerce did this really large study, presented it to us in December. This is a snapshot from their executive report. And you can see here the first conclusion and recommendation they gave focuses on more frequent project-based assignments. That students are graduating with a lot of textbook knowledge, but in general, they've never done anything on their own. They've never had to create a project by themselves. This is consistent with national data. 87% of employers across the country are asking us in higher education to produce graduates who have experience in their own original projects. And so Southern Utah University has taken this on. We're the only institution in the Western United States that I'm aware of that is doing this in a comprehensive manner. Everybody's doing it in a small degree. We're doing it for the entire university. And I can give you an example of this. Tyler Richardson is an engineering student, always liked building things. We have five engagement centers and he needed to pick one of the engagement centers, so he chose the Creativity Engagement Center um, and decided what he was going to do was create a windmill that could power up a battery and then charge his cell phone or whatever else he wanted charged. So what he had to do was just create a proposal, a budget, all the equipment that he needed, um, how much time it would take, what he was hoping to learn from it, what the outcomes would be, and put this all together, make a proposal, have it accepted. And then the second phase is to carry out the project. We're not as interested in whether the project is successful or not. What we're interested in is what they're learning. His was very successful. It took a lot of uh, effort. Ended up with a windmill on top of his house that charged a car battery that then could charge his cell phone or anything else he wanted. The third phase is the reflective phase. What did I learn? What could I have done better? How did this work? We think that this is exactly what industry is looking for graduates. And they're doing this whether they're graduating in engineering or history or accounting or anything else. Really, really fun project. We're getting all kinds of accolades from around the country because we're leading this discussion nationwide on project-based learning. It's a subset of engaged learning that focuses on practical skills for industry. Now, I'd like to give you one more example of the innovation that's going on at Southern Utah University, and that's in the world of general education. I'll give you an example. My daughter signed up for a research writing class several years ago, went to the first day and was told, your research writing assignment is the death penalty. It just depressed the heck out of her. <laughs> because it wasn't a topic that had any interest to her at all. She didn't see any relevance. She came home and said, this is what my topic is. And I said, that's really cool, sweetheart. We can do this together because I think that's a fascinating topic. And she says, I hate it. And therefore, she didn't put much effort because she just wanted to get through it. It was, it was a classic general education hoop to jump through rather than something that was going to change your life. We're doing away with that. We're getting rid of hoops. We're creating a comprehensive, integrated, immediately relevant kind of a program. Let me give you an example of how this could look. You can imagine how excited perhaps a music student might be to take physical science class. They typically are so focused on music they're not terribly interested. And so then they're kind of turned off by science because they end up taking science classes with science majors who love it for their general education requirement. Imagine having a vocal class, three credit vocal class, and a three credit physical science class that is on the science of sound. And taking these two three credit classes, putting them together to one six credit class, taught team taught by two faculty members, a scientist and a musician, and teaching science, all the essential learning outcomes, the scientific method, but teaching it in a context that is immediately relevant and interesting to the music student. Take an engineering student who has a three credit project class that is then married to a three credit research writing class, a class that they typically don't enjoy taking. And now we have a team-taught class between a writing instructor who doesn't have to spend half of the semester building content that they can then write about, but can spend the entire amount of time teaching how to write. Because the content is coming from the engineering instructor and combined together, 
Everything is relevant. It is immediately relevant and obvious to the student why the student wants to, to put full energy, her full energy, into this writing class because it's a project relevant to the degree. Well, we're taking all of this and meshing it into eight PhD faculty members teaching 10 courses of study in one class, and everything is relevant to everything. And we're doing it in a way that's scalable. Now, not all of them will want a 34-credit class, so we'll have it available in all kinds of iterations. Um, but this is one class for an entire year where no faculty member will talk for more than 20 minutes, and we all just roll together. It's so exciting. I'd love to take everybody into this little study group where the faculty members are building this because, for example, the biology teacher said, I usually take three weeks to teach the chemistry part. But the chemistry faculty member is going to do that for me. So I've now captured three weeks of chemistry. And everyone is saying the same thing. A lot of fun. Well, I think that's the summary of uh, what we're doing and available for questions. In conclusion, I wanted to go back to the start, which is our focus is to create high-quality bicycles coming out of the front door of the shop, not amassing the maximum number um, of raw <clears throat> materials coming in the back door. But because of some of the innovation that we're doing, uh, how nimble Southern Utah University is, the interest in being creative, the willingness to reinvent things, to teach things the way students need them rather than the way we want them, I decided rather than the bicycle, I'd show you a red Ferrari. We can change lanes, we can speed up, we can slow down, we can adjust, and that's exactly what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, President, for that great presentation. I see we have a couple of questions. Representative Fred Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a question for the President. If I understand what you just described, I remember getting lousy grades in English in high school until one of my English teachers got sick and they put in somebody else. And she had us doing research projects on anything that we wanted. We had to get it approved, but we would do a thesis or a paper on something like passive solar or something like that. And all of a sudden my grade skyrocketed because it was something I actually was interested in. And I'm hearing that's what you're proposing to do. Yeah, this, this is, um, instead of putting our toes in the water, we're just jumping in at first and doing uh, kind of an experiment that begins in the fall. And it is going to be completely all related to a single topic that the student is choosing to join. And everything is relevant to everything. Well, everything is relevant. The, the math class is the, the general education statistics class, and it's not a math class. It's today we've talked about this. Let me show you how to run the numbers for that. The history teacher talked about this. Let me show you how to run the numbers on that. The biologist talked about this. Let me show you how to run. So everything all of a sudden relates. The math class becomes important because it relates to something that you're interested in. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Senator DeBacus. Hello, uh, President. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, I, I've heard a lot about chemistry and uh, math and preparation and stuff. I, did, I haven't heard a word about the most, from my point of view, exciting, wonderful, amazing part of SUU, and that is the Shakespeare connection and the acting and the incredible thing that uh, your university adds to our entire state. I wonder if you'd take a moment or two and talk about how, how they all mesh. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, of course... Um, Southern Utah University is the state's designated liberal arts and sciences school. We interpret that to mean that we need to deliver a more personal and higher level education than might be expected at another school our size. We've created in the last several years this beautiful freshman experience, common freshman experience. Um, the data shows that if you bring all the freshmen in and give them one common experience, that they're more likely to persist to graduation, and I think that's one of the reasons why our graduation rate has been growing so well. But Every single SUU student is given a Shakespeare play to read, and the entire freshman class goes and watches the same play. So they read a play, then they watch it performed by professional actors, and it becomes something that then helps inform the whole year. Other faculty members refer to that class. It's part of this um, fully integrated educational model where the liberal arts, the sciences, everything becomes part of one big picture. The way to succeed in life and have flexibility is to be a liberally trained, technically savvy person. <laughs> or a technically trained, liberally, broadly educated person. It gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Senator. Senator Vickers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, President Smith. 
been good to get to know you since you've come to Cedar City. Appreciate that. And uh, you, I feel like you've really tried hard to, and done a great job there. Just a question, you know, before you came, it was actually a couple of years ago, the, the, the institution decided to raise their entrance requirements. And I know at that time, then Superintendent Jim Johnson said it's probably the best thing that happened to the school district because it kind of elevated the level of the students that want, wanted to attend SUU. And I just want, are you seeing that same kind of success with the incoming students? I know that you, I think that you've also kept some slots open for local students that maybe didn't quite meet those those entrance requirements, but I don't know if you want to comment on that. I, I feel like, from my perspective on the outside looking in, it appears that it's really increased the, the level of students and the success the students are having. I just wonder. Yeah, I, I think if I understand what the superintendents are telling us, that this is helping our university, but it's helping them in their job because as, as they're able to tell the students that are... Um, admission standards are going up, that students realize that they need to step up their effort as well. So it's helping the high school students succeed in their high school experience, and it's also bringing them to SUU a little bit more prepared. So we've seen a slight increase in our GPA and ACT scores. Um, I'll mention, though, that we have a thing called College Connections, so that if a student doesn't meet our admission standards and they make an application, we've got enough seats that anybody that really wants to come, we have a space for them. So it's almost a soft admission standard, but it's, it's what we're striving for. Um, and those that come in below the admission standards are required to enter into this special program, and that program um, gives a much more intensive advising focus. They have to meet with an advisor every two weeks to make sure that they're staying on track. Anyway, it's just, it's a, thank you. It's a very fun project that we've got. Well, thank you. And thank you for what you're doing there. Thanks. Thank you. Representative McKiff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our family has been blessed to have three of our children obtain either bachelor's or master's degrees from Southern Utah. It's been a wonderful thing. Then I'm especially appreciative of President Wyatt, who took over at a, a pretty difficult budgetary time at that institution and shepherded through this last year where we didn't have a, a component in our funding. Our approach enhanced the difficulty of getting through this last year, and I'm conscious of how carefully you managed that and how good of a job you did, and I'm personally appreciative of that. Uh, and also, in this role, I'm appreciative of what you've done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Representative John Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's good to see an old friend here. We miss you in Ephraim, but uh, good you. to see you're doing good things down, down south. I, uh, I just had a question on the integrated general education. I think it's very exciting what you're doing. I, I was just curious from a faculty perspective, the response as far as course preparation goes. You know, when, when faculty talk, they talk about the number of classes they teach and then the number of preps that they have. So, you know, if you teach the same class a couple times, that's a little easier to prepare for and you can teach more sections of that. In this case, you know, I, I teach history. If I'm going to teach the history of chemistry, that's going to require a lot of a lot of new preparation for me. Uh, is that required reduced workload in, in number of classes taught, or, or how do your faculty respond to that? Well, what, you wouldn't teach the history of chemistry. You'd stand up for 20 minutes and talk about the history of the invention of the cotton gin, and you'd do that for about 20 minutes, and then an engineering faculty member would stand up and explain how it works, then an art faculty member would explain an aspect of it, and then the biology faculty member would get up and say something, and the research writing teacher would say something. So that what happens is, is that the faculty leave their syllabus, their textbooks, everything home. They teach their subject, but it's kind of like a jazz ensemble. That we're highly focused on the learning outcomes, constantly using that as our benchmark. But everything is rolling in one story that tells it the way students will engage it after we graduate. Today is a life science day and tomorrow is a physical science day. But the faculty have been excited. We have more faculty that want to participate than we have capacity right now because we're still in the experimenting phase. It's really captured the imagination of a lot of people. I think it's fascinating. I think that uh, it's something that we're going to see and, and have seen in other places, but I, I admire you for jumping all in. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Representative. Senator Urquhart. Thank you, President. Um, your time at Snow and your time at SUU, would you please tell us what financial incentives do you currently receive from the state of Utah at your institution? We, the way we fund higher ed, what, what are we uh, creating incentives for you to do? And what should we do to create the proper incentives for S? What do you want SUU to be? And, and what incentives should we put out there for SUU to respond to those and move in that direction? Let me 
run back to this if I can. This, these graduation rates that are way above average are expensive. To increase the graduation rate by 7% per year from 35 to 50 over seven years is expensive. We can't do this without adding advisors and everything else. SUU has only been able to accomplish this by increasing tuition at times at rates higher than what we would have wanted to do. It's, we just had to tax the students in order to get here. There isn't a state incentive. There, there isn't any sort of state incentive that the legislature is giving us to increase this graduation rate. It's all internally driven. We would be thrilled, and we'll talk about this more, I suspect, on Monday with the budget proposal, but we would love to have an incentive from you that helps us increase our graduation rates. We think the incentives right now are just to add as many aluminum tubing in the back door as possible because the most consistent funding from the state for universities over the last 20 years has been for growth, and there's not been any funding for completions, been no incentive for completions, um, and completions on time. So that's, thank you for asking the question. We're really hopeful because it's been our engine. Thank you for your good presentation. Representative Wheatley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the <clears throat> slide that you were showing the graduation rates, I'm always curious when we have institutions show the demographics of their students about whether or not the staff and administration kind of mirror the reflection of their students. Yeah. And I don't know about SUU. Do you have any idea? Yeah, we are expanding in this area. I would, I would tell you, when I showed up at Snow College, we didn't have a single African-American employee. So I got the privilege of hiring the first and the second and the third and the fourth. We, we have employees from all these categories at SUU, and we're working to expand them. Uh, we don't have a single faculty member that's an African-American faculty member. And those are things that are high priorities to us. It hasn't slowed down our completion rates. Right because we're given the attention that they need, but we do need to have more mentors, life mentors. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President. Let me add last slide. Keep calm. The Magna Carta is 800 years old this year. Yeah. Don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> but that's a pretty amazing uh, anniversary and something that, that we feel uh, a part of. We, we feel all of us as institutions that our job is to promote democracy which has some of its roots in this. And democracy is the economy, and it's a lot more than that. Thank you very much.